and welcome to Pathway Online. I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us today. We are going to go into worship, and then we're gonna have some a few announcements, then we're gonna continue on in the Mighty Series with a message from Pastor Andrew. It's gonna be a great time together, so let's get started. You 
working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here darkness my god that is who you are you are a way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here touching every heart i worship you inviting you to Power of Prayer. So this is taking place April 28th at 7.30. It's going to be on Zoom. And for all other information, go to pathwaycc.net slash news. Giving is an integral act of worship. It expresses our gratitude, faith, love for others, and is in an alignment with God's mission. Generosity flows from a belief that all that we have, are, or ever will be is not ours to hold on to, it's ours to share because God has shared his wealth with us and we seek to bring glory to God. Here are the ways that you can give at Pathway. 
make an online payment, set up automatic withdrawals, pay with e-transfer, or pay with PayPal. For all other information, make sure to check out pathwaycc.net slash kit. Hi everyone, and welcome back to our series entitled Mighty. Today we're going to be talking about how God is a mighty stronghold. So we're going to get right into the scripture. There's a ton of good stuff that we want to talk about today. So let's get right into our scripture, which is going to be Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 through 6. So I'll give you a second to turn to Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 through 6. And it says this, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you are our protector. You are our provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are El Shaddai, Lord. We love you so much, and we thank you that God, you take care of us. And today as we explore how you do those things and how we can view you in different lights, I pray that you would just be with us, change our hearts, change our minds, and Lord, allow us to really grow by what you have to say about who you are and how we can respond to that. We love you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you a story. When I was younger, I used to play a game uh, maybe maybe not a game so much as me telling a story with myself as the main character. And I did this at nighttime when I would get into bed. And what I would do is I would, in my mind, I would place myself in a perilous situation. A situation where I was in danger, such as dinosaurs creeping around that wanted to eat me. Or, shocker, me being in a war situation where people are looking at me through the uh, eyes of a sniper rifle. And I would... I would be in this situation where I was in great danger, but as long as, I would imagine that as long as I was underneath this blanket that I had, this special blanket, uh, as long as I was underneath that blanket and didn't move, sometimes didn't even breathe for for periods of time, uh, then I would be, I would be safe. I would be protected. That blanket became my refuge in my head. The place that I could rest, the place that I could fall asleep knowing that I was okay. And as weird as that sounds and as naive as that is, and some of you are probably chuckling chuckling to yourself thinking about me imagining dinosaurs are going to eat me to try and go to sleep. um, It's a perfect picture of what God offers to us in Psalm 91. He is our refuge and our fortress. He is our stronghold. And so today we're going to be talking about how our relationship with God looks when he is our stronghold and when we actually treat him as such. And so the first thing that we want to talk about is these two words that are very key in the Christian language. You hear them a lot. They're Christianese, whatever you want to say, and that is dwelling and abiding. So there's some questions that we want to ask here. And the first one is pretty easy. What does it mean to dwell? And again, as easy as that question is, it's a simple answer as, as well. It's not really that complex. It means to live. It's, a, it's the idea of a permanent residency. Most of us here live in this town. Wherever you live, you have a house. It is your dwelling place. That is where you go to sleep at night. That is where you go to rest. That is where you go to be with your family and friends. Uh, and so, so that's not that hard to dwell. But then that leads us to a second question in this verse where it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So what is the secret place of the Most High? And a lot of people have defined this in a lot of different ways. There's actually a great book by A.W. Tozer called The Knowledge of the Holy, where he he goes into an in-depth explanation of these things. But I believe, personally, that this is our Christian life. The secret place of the Most High is where we go to have one-on-one communion with God Almighty. 
It is where we pray, we worship, and we study his word, we read his word, whatever you want to do. And that allows us to have closer communion with him. These three things, in fact, are essential to being a part of Christ's body. They are, they're what connects us to him in a very real and deep way. I've heard it said that some people have said that if you don't have these three things in your Christian walk on a daily basis, then you have no right to call your Christian I don't want to put that kind of pressure or judgment on anybody, but I will say these three things are extremely important to our walk with Jesus Christ, and they allow us to abide in him. And so that leads us to this other question is, okay, abide is not a word that we use very often anymore, or at least most of us. I use it regularly, but but I'm a little weird. I envision dinosaurs eating me to go to sleep. So I in, in, uh, in the second half of verse one, he says, He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It is an interesting thing when we abide because that is a daily thing. It's a habitual thing. Abiding implies habit. Abiding implies that we are regularly with God. And so that's why we talk about prayer and worship and studying or reading his word. To abide in the shadow of the Almighty means that we're not only that we not only have continual communion with him, but that because we have that communion, he will keep us safe. Notice that because we have that communion. Now, again, we're going to go into this a little deeper, but just because we don't abide with him doesn't mean that God doesn't protect us regularly. I mean, there are plenty of non-believers out there that are protected from dangers and have amazing stories of that. So I'm not suggesting that, but what I am saying is when we abide with him, We are able to respond to trials and tribulations and struggles and whatever else in the correct way, which is to turn and press into God. It is to turn and allow him to take care of our situation and not panic and throw things and whatever else we can do in those things. So when we abide, he is able to protect us in a way that we are able to have confidence that he is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is our stronghold. And so we abide in him and abiding in his shadow means that I have continual protection from the world. I have continual protection from the dangers of this world. Now, again, maybe not necessarily always physical dangers, but definitely spiritual dangers. And the rest of these verses, um, even in the rest of this psalm, talks about specifically the pestilence of this world. And it's this idea of actually spiritual dangers, not just the normal uh physical problems, but actually the stuff that we get attacked with from the enemy on our daily basis. And so when we abide in his shadow, we are protected from that. And just as shadows protect from the heat of the sun, the Almighty protects from the arrows of the enemy. As in verse 4 that we see there. Sorry, not verse 4. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Sorry. (laughs) But the Almighty is our protector and our provider. Turn, if you will, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're just going to read one quick verse in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're just going to read verse 3. It says, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do not... Uh, that you do and will do the things that we command you. So here's this idea is he, he guards us, he establishes us, and he does that. He guards us against the evil one, from the evil one. Isaiah 40, uh, let's see, Isaiah 40, uh, 41.10. If you turn there, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. We don't have to fear this world. We don't have to be afraid because God is with us. He is here presently. He is protecting us because we abide with him. And one last example is Psalm 46. Psalm 46, and we're going to read verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And verse 2 even says, Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. No matter what happens, we will not be moved, because God is with us. We will not fear, because He is our protector. He is a God that protects us and holds us close. He, quote, covers you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. And that's in verse 4. 
oftentimes God is pictured as as almost a mother hen that's protecting her chicks from the weather. And if you know anything about chickens and how they protect their chicks, that's a, that's a very awesome compliment. <laughs> and it's something that the, those chickens will protect their chicks above all else. When we abide in him and dwell with him, he protects us from so many terrible things. And only someone with great strength is able to protect us and, and in this way. He is the one that's able to do it. And that is because he is the stronghold. He is the stronghold. Look, even though my blanket that I had as a kid weighed roughly 200 pounds, maybe, <laughs> and even though my bed was warm and comfortable, and even though I lived in a safe home, there was no real protection being offered from my real threats. Now, the imaginary threats were all neutralized by the fearsome tigers that were emblazoned on my blanket. But the real threats in this world, my blanket was not protecting me from any of those real threats. But it made me feel better. And, and that's why people do the things they do is because it makes them feel better. When we, when we try to protect ourselves, it makes us feel better. There are preppers in this world, and, and you guys know, probably there's some that you might know personally. And, and even if you aren't storing 6,000 pounds of flour in your basement or in your underground bunker, there's a strong likelihood that you have, you have put some money away for a rainy day, or you might be a workaholic because as long as you work hard, your job is safe. You, you may find your rest from the craziness of the world on the lake at the end of your fishing rod. The point is that we all have something that we do. The point is, is much like my tiger blanket, all of us have some sort of security blanket that we believe protects us or gives us rest or even saves us in our time of need. Here in Psalm 91, David is saying that God is the refuge in which he finds his rest. The Lord, meaning the ruler of life, and we'll talk about that in a minute, is the one who can be our refuge, our fortress, and our stronghold. God is the only one that can fill that, fulfill that role because of who he is. He's the creator of this world. All of this may sound great, and I think that many of us already know all of these things, but when we look at our lives and how we live, do we really treat God like he is our stronghold? Do we really treat him like he is able to take care of us and protect us from any danger or any, anything that may happen around us? For those of you who are trying to, you know, put money in the stock markets and that's where you find your, your safety net or all those things, you know, when, when the bottom falls out and, and you're broke, do you turn to God or do you turn to despair? Because we don't place our hope in the stock markets. We don't place our hope in a tiger blanket. We don't place our hope in, in another person, our spouse or our children or anything like that. We place our hope in God who is able to protect us because he is all powerful. He is almighty. And I love that word. And I've gotten to, to look at that word a lot in this study and just appreciate the idea that God is the almighty. Almighty. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's take a moment and back, uh, back up to examine what it means to be a stronghold, a refuge, and a fortress. And you'll have to bear with me because I, I may get a little military on you guys right now. Maybe not. I'll try. Uh, but a stronghold or a fortress was a, was a building. It's not uh, something that we see very often anymore, uh, but it was a building or a group of buildings that had multiple purposes for an army or a city or a village. Uh, the two main purposes, though, for a stronghold uh, was security and survival. During the time of need, an army could retreat to a stronghold and put up defenses and, and hold out in a, in, a, in a stronghold for a long time where, while the enemy sieged and, and they were even able to defend the people inside, whether it be women and children or whether it be, again, a city or, or a town or a small village or a group of people. But these buildings were fortified with rocks or natural geography uh, so that the enemy could not get in no matter what. The only way in was over the top. And a lot of times they had, you know, spires at the top that they would have to climb over. There were guard towers. There's this idea that this is our, this is our last stand. We're not letting you in no matter what. 
And, and interestingly enough, before David's time, the Israelites would use caves and mountains uh, to hold out in. Really, strongholds as far as like actual cities or buildings was not a thing until really David came along and started building them. And it's interesting when you read through the Psalms how often you see that God is our stronghold, God is our fortress, God is our refuge. Uh, they were they were often built with walls that went around them, and some of these walls uh, would house the people inside, and you would have entire cities. A lot of us know the picture of like an old English. A city with walls all around it, and then you had your hall in the center or a castle in the center that people could go to in times of need. But some of these walls, guys, were up to 25 feet thick. Now that's paranoia, to build a wall that is 25 feet thick to protect yourself. Maybe some of us would call it wisdom. Uh, I'd be on the wisdom side. <laughs> but like when with this in mind, we need to think about, okay, how is God our stronghold? How is he our refuge? And I want to encourage you guys that this, this may sound hard, but it's not because God is our rest and our refuge. We're, we're in a battle and it's a battle not against, like there's not literal swords and, and arrows flying right now in our battle. We, we battle against the powers and principalities of this world. We, we fight a spiritual battle. And here's the thing is there's a real battlefield. And when we're on the battlefield, we get injured, we get shot, we get wounded. Maybe not physically, but emotionally or spiritually or, or even just we get tired. And guys, we're out there on the battlefield. And when we do get hurt, when we do get injured, when that happens, and, and I put emphasis on the word when that happens, uh, God does not leave us on the field of battle wounded and dying. He takes us back to find our refuge and our healing. He takes us to his strong tower. There's a small point that some of us may miss here. You have to be out on the battlefield. You have to be out there. Utilizing a fortress without having been in the battle is better defined as vacationing at the spa. Because a fortress has all the amenities of comfortable beds and, and relaxation and healing. But if you're not, if you haven't been out on the battlefield first, then you're just enjoying pleasantries and luxury. There needs to be activity in the battle. There needs to be participation in the battle so that we can appreciate the refuge the way it is intended to be appreciated. And so I've said this before. I got it from David Platt. I don't know who he got it from, but I doubt it was from him uh, alone. But it's a question. Are you on a cruise ship or are you on a battleship? Is God your life raft that you cling to for everything? Or is he a luxury liner that you expect to pamper you and exist for your pleasure? I think too many times, especially now in, in some of our current situation that we find ourselves, I'm, we are blessed to live in the time that we do and in the country that we do where we, we are able to practice our freedom of religion. But sometimes I think that we treat God like he owes us this luxurious life. Like he owes us this, this peaceful, serene time. And it's interesting because when you look at battlefields, people knew what was going on. If you're, if you're commissioned on a submarine in a time of war, you are constantly aware that you are not on a cruise ship. And so are we on a cruise ship or are we on a battleship in our own walk? David here uses words like the Lord and my God and again the Almighty. These terms indicate lordship, meaning that he or God has lordship in our lives and he alone is able to protect us from the enemy and his attacks. Here's the thing, guys, is if you call him Lord, do you treat him like he is your Lord? Do you treat him like God? We cannot say you are my Lord but I don't want to do that. That, that, that. Those two things don't coincide. They, they don't coexist. They don't mesh. It, that, it cannot happen. We do not get that opportunity. So who is he to you? Is he the almighty? Is he, is, you, is, is he your God? Or is he your activities director on the cruise ship? I want to be clear in something. And I, I want to be clear in saying that there's nothing wrong with being prepared for the worst. 
please be responsible in saving up for a rainy day. Have a few days of, uh, of worth of food stored up in your basement just in case. It's not a bad idea. I don't recommend being a workaholic, but we all should be good examples of what strong work ethic looks like in a Christian life. But go to the lake. Get married. Enjoy a night on the town. They're not inherently bad things. These are not things that are negative or going against God. And, and every, everyone has a right to do these things. But it's, it's when these things become our why. It's when they become the reason for our existence that they can become a problem. I don't exist to try and solve my own issues. I exist to worship the only one who can solve all of my issues. And I've got plenty. His walls are taller than any enemy attack. They're thicker than any other. He protects me and defends me from all of the advances of the enemy better than I can protect myself or any stock market or any house or any wall I can build. So whatever your battle is, whether it's spiritual, physical, emotional, whatever, allow him to give you rest. Allow him to be the one who protects you from the fiery darts of the enemy. He is able to defend better than any security blanket. He just wants us to abide in him. He desires us to spend time with him. He wants us to experience his full rest and restoration to make us ready to enter the battle once again. The purposes of a fortress was to heal and to get you back out on the battle as soon as possible. Let us be confident in his ability. Let us trust his walls of protection and let us pray with David. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you protect us. We thank you that you've given us an amazing example of how we can take refuge in you. You protect us, you love us, and God, we just wanna thank you for it and we wanna live our lives in this battle accordingly. We wanna fight hard and Lord, we wanna, we wanna experience the rest that you have to give us. I pray that we wouldn't seek for it anywhere else other than you. We love you so much and we thank you in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us at Pathway Online today. I really hope that you've enjoyed our time together. For all information about what's going on at church, if you've missed anything, make sure to check out pathwaycc.net slash news for all the information of what's going on. Make sure that you have a fantastic day. We'll see you again.